Hello everyone, welcome back. On this week's video, it's going to be two in one because I don't think it would be practical to post them separately, so I just decided to bunch them together. As the title suggests, it's an, another Harry Potter X Files crossover because I just love this shit and I regret nothing. So here we go. It's a portrait of Scully and Mulder, as I imagined them in that setting, uh, raised with magic and working in the Department of Mysteries. So I kind of imagine Scully being a lot more aggressive than the show's counterpart for some reason. I'm not sure why, to be honest, but I imagine her having this uh, kind of dark aggression to her. The same kind we see sometimes in the actual show, like when she kills this stalker dude, because there's always a stalker episode in shit in cop shows. So yeah, she kills him and we as spectators, we see that she kind of lost her mind for a, a minute and it's super scary and I absolutely love it, that side of her. So I kind of imagine her being a lot more like that, especially in, in duels and battles with the people they chase around. Their clothes are inspired by these other artists that I really like. Uh, the way she depicts the Wizarding World fashion. They wear bracelets and lots of jewelry and men have their nails painted black even. So I am heavily inspired by this artist and I will always credit her for that because that's where I got the, the inspiration, the idea. About Mulder, I imagine him being not as gullible actually. I, I don't know, I just imagine them slightly different from the show for some reason. Like he still believes, you know, weird shit and stuff like that, but since cryptids are canon in the Harry Potter universe, like most of them, I kind of picture him being a little bit more, um, you know, centered <laughs> and not as ridiculously gullible as in the show. Those who know the episode The Jersey's Devil know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. Uh, about the color scheme, I painted Scully this kind of sepia tone to kind of mimic old pictures, but it ended up kind of matching the the house I, I personally sorted her into. People normally would sort Scully in the Ravenclaw house because of obvious reasons. She's smart, she's clever, she prizes intelligence, but in my opinion, as someone who follows the show since I was like six years old and watched the show twice, like entirely, her courage stands out a lot more for me than her wits, because she faced pretty hard decisions during the show, and decisions that pretty much changed the character's direction during the story. I won't give examples because I don't know if people might be watching or want to watch it, so I won't spoil anyone. But let's say she takes decisions very alike to Hermione in Harry Potter. So for that reason solely, I think she's a Gryffindor, not a Ravenclaw. But I'm pretty sure the, the sorting hat had this uh, moment of confusion. Oh my god, what house are you? Ah! You know, pretty much like Hermione herself. And Mulder, I sorted him to Slytherin because he's really privileged, actually. He went abroad to study, he knows the right people, or he's really protected by the big names in the FBI, including their own enemy. But that's another story, and that's why he, he was never killed, you know, like in season one, or even before that. Uh, his father had some privileges in the FBI too, because his father also worked in there, and his ambition to find the truth pretty much this 
destroy the character a little in the long run. Those who are also fans and watched the last seasons and compared to the first seasons, they know what I'm talking about. He gave up a lot of things to, in name of searching the truth he wanted so much. So yeah, that's a very slithering thing to do, in my opinion. I also imagine uh, they work as hours, like special hours in the department of mysteries. They are known as hours by the rest of the ministry, but of course, unspeakables, no one knows who they are. So their unspeakable side, it's just the department itself that knows that. They just run around solving these weird mysteries. I had someone on Tumblr asking what kind of cases they would work at because of the fact that in Harry Potter, like, magical creatures are a thing. And I just can answer with the Chamber of Secrets, of course. Like, it's an X-File right there because it involves a basilisk which is uh, a creature that is known in the wizarding world. People can easily find what a basilisk are if they know what they are searching for. But in the Chamber of Secrets, uh, no one knows what's happening because students are dropping almost dead in a way, but basilisks, they kill their victims. So that's not as easily to place as we can see in the story. So uh, there is this entire mystery of what is actually happening because no one can actually put the pieces together. Only Hermione can do that because Hermione, you know. And that's the kind of uh, mysteries they solve. Things that are so out of place, so weird looking that not even in the wizarding world they are able to solve easily without a further investigation. So yeah, that's the kind of work they do there. And I had canon that aliens are a thing too, but they are called other names like star elves. They are pretty much like house elves. They are just a creature with a different type of magic that comes from space. That's the their kind of investigation there. About the art itself, it's not a great thing, I think. I, I wanted them to look kind of sketchy or not as polished as my usual paintings are. Uh, because I wanted the dynamics that sketches provide, you know, like more loose lines and, and brush strokes. And my process for monochrome paintings are slightly different than my, my process for more polished and finished paintings. It's hard to explain, but I think it, it's kind of evident as you watch. I sketch the figure with soft brushes, airbrush, stuff like that. And then I, I just polish the, the sketch a little bit on top of it and I add the darker tones so I can uh, figure out the values. Uh, of the painting. I use a lot the marker tool for this value figuring out, you know, like placing the, the dark color of the capes and the hair because the, the marker's transparency helps a lot to not wash the lines away so I can still see them, even if I paint on the same layer. And then I just merge everything and refine it. That's pretty much the, the entire process there for you. So yeah, I think this is it. I hope you enjoy the, the paintings and the narration because people seem to like them. So why not? Uh, every time I feel I have something to talk about the paintings and the process, I will definitely make a small narration for you. So see you next week and thank you very much for watching. Bye.